So let us talk about uh, object-oriented concepts in Scala. So we'll start with classes and then we'll see constructor arguments and class variables. So I continue on the lab itself. I launched Scala already on the lab. And here the way you create the class is by using keyword class and then class name. In this case, I'm using a class name called order. You will understand why I'm using order and all a bit later. And for now, I will just cover what uh, order have. And based on that, we'll try to come up with the code and all. So order have four attributes, order ID, uh, order date, order customer ID, and order status. It represents uh, order in any e-commerce platform. Any order will have at least uh, three things. Who places the order, uh, what is the order date, and what is the status of the order right so uh, and also a primary key in in general uh, in rdbms uh, so we are uh, creating a class based on a table structure which have four fields which we'll see a bit later so here i'm defining columns order id is of type integer order date i want to represent data string to just keep it simple order customer id integer and then order status string. So when I say class order and give the arguments in the brackets, it means that we are actually defining the constructor directly. If it is Java, you have to define class, class name, and it doesn't take anything uh, in circular brackets. You open curly braces. In that you define constructor, so on and so forth. Okay, in this case, if you just define class order and then pass the arguments like this, it treat itself as a, uh, uh, a class with a default constructor which takes four arguments. If you want to define the logic for the constructor and also if you want to create any methods within the class, you open curly braces like this and you, you, you take care of whatever you want. So for example, as part of the constructor, I just want to print ln um, saying I am inside order constructor. Okay. And also I want to uh, create some functionality. So as I have demonstrated earlier, all the function starts with def. So if you want to define a function, you can say def function name, arguments, and return type, etc. If you want to override uh, of uh, uh, any method, if you want to override any method uh, um, belong to a, any class in the hierarchy, starting from uh, the uh, pa the parent most class uh, until the immediate parent to this, you can override it by saying override def and rest of the stuff is same as any other function all right and then uh, whatever you typically do for any function so in this case i want to override two string function i will come back to this in a moment for now i will just close this if you want to if you don't if you don't have any functions or if you don't want to define anything in the behavior you don't need to use these curly braces also just type this and you have the class with you and let me hit enter now so now the class is created if you want to see what is happening as part of the scala compiler you can use a command called java p hyphen p and then give the class name which is order in this case and uh, you might see the server saying no java p tool available it is because my java home is pointing to JRE not to the JDK and also your JDK should uh, should be I think 1.7 I'm not sure whether with 1.8 it will work or not but with 1.7 JDK the Java P command will work so we just need to um, set the Java home to 1.7.x and we are good to go so export Java home equal to slash USR slash java if i are using my lab oh, 
okay just give me a moment yeah this is the path uh, user lib jvm java 1.7.0. open jdk the current one is pointing to jre of 1.8 okay if we point to jdk of 1.8 also it might work but i'm not 100 percent sure but um, jdk of uh, 1.7 it will work for sure okay so this is the command which you need to use to point to jdk 1.7 so that you can run java p command in scala now i'm going to scala again because we close the session um, uh, the class is gone uh, so i'm rerunning again so that uh, the class is created and now i am saying java p hyphen p order now, now you can see this class just have a constructor uh, pub where you can see this so there's a default constructor that is already available okay now if you want to create the object you can just say as if any variable val means immutable val means uh, mutable if you want to explicitly define the data type you can do it like this which is not mandatory in scala and uh, the data type will be inherited based on the assignment assignment is mandatory and here it's a class so i'm trying to create an object uh, which takes four constructor arguments so the default constructor um, in order have four constructor arguments okay so i'm passing uh, order id which is of type integer which is one and then order date and then order customer id and then order status okay now you see the constructor logic is executed and also it printed the um, reference address uh, for the order object okay now let us see how we can actually start defining functions in it as i have explained earlier if you want to create any function as part of this class you can just start with def and then uh, create the function specification and the logic in this case i want to override two string function so it starts with override keyword and then rest of the stuff is same as any other function two string equal to if you want to write it in multiple lines you can open curly bracket and you can write as much logic as you want uh, or you can if it is just single line you can directly write the code so in this case i will be writing in the same line so i just want to uh, print whenever i use println and um, invoke two string function i just want to get the class name bracket and uh, the values that are passed to the constructor which is order id and concatenation operator is plus order id plus comma plus order date plus comma order customer id plus order status plus okay and then you close the bracket and hit enter class is created now if you want to create the object just run run it and now you can see the instead of printing byte address of the object we can see the details of the object because the two string function is defined like this and two string will be invoked automatically whenever you use println uh, that's why we don't need to explicitly say uh, order dot two string just if you say println of order object it, it will uh, it will print uh, whatever way we want like this okay 
so the default behavior of val is to give the data type and the value assigned to it and that's what happened here it is nothing but default behavior of toasting uh, now we have overridden that now if you want to do java p on it you can see in the toasting function and also it actually created implicit class variables uh, in it because we are trying to use those things but we cannot access these class variables because they are defined as private final as you define them as private final if you try to access them it will not work so how to access them how to update them with class so the workaround is to create uh, a class variables not just constructor arguments like this okay so here i am going to paste mode and then copying this line okay and instead of just passing constructor arguments i want to pass them as class variables so if you want to define them as variables rather than arguments you have to define them as val or var val means immutable val means mutable okay so rest of the stuff is same so i'm just copying these three lines directly and control d so we already have the order created as per the prior definition of the class okay if i try to access any of the elements in the order it fails because the uh, the class variables are private final and there is no way to access them directly unless we define functions to access these things we will not be able to uh, access okay but if you define as val and now if i do java p on this you can see it not only created the class variables with private final you also see methods the four methods and each method name each method name is same as the corresponding variable name so order id order id order date order date and it has return type so whatever value is there in that we are trying to return these are nothing but getter methods they don't have get prefixed to these methods but internally their behavior is getter methods and the necessary boilerplate code will be automatically created by just defining variables as val if you define them as val you will also get setter methods so let us create a variable of type order again so i am recreating the order now it will be created with the new definition which have getter methods also now if i say order dot order id it will return the value it is actually returning the value because it, we are invoking this function and scala using uh, brackets like this is optional um, or sometimes it will not uh, uh, even allow if if there are no parameters associated with the function in this case already doesn't have uh, any arguments so scala doesn't permit us to use circular brackets also okay so that's why it failed into uh, order dot order id doesn't take any parameters now the same thing if i define each of these variables as var okay um, before doing that let me say order dot order id equal to 2 i'm trying to override the value it is saying reassignment to val because all of these are private final and also we uh, we have declared them as val so there are only getter methods there are no setter methods uh, to these variables right so now let me go to paste mode again and change these variables to mutable which is var okay now let me paste the rest of the lines
okay now if i see the java p output you can see these variables are not final anymore it's only private and also on top of each getter method there is a setter method also okay so the way it will work is if you see order id underscore dollar equal okay which is nothing but you can invoke those functions by saying let me create the object first i can access each of these elements uh, each of the attributes in the order by saying by using the getter method if i want to override i can just say equal to to and it will actually override the value you can also check it okay so because of the setter methods um, we will be able to assign you can also invoke the same method by saying order dot order id underscore equal of 3 and you can check the order now the value is set to 3 because if you see here it is saying dollar equal eq which means this one okay and this underscore is also optional that's why we are able to say like this or even the circular brackets is optional in scala while invoking functions so indirectly we are doing the this by just saying this okay the, that is why we are able to assign the values to attributes when the class arguments or class attributes are defined as mutable variables by default if you don't specify well or where they are just arguments and they are they are private final they will not be getters and setters you can only instantiate the object you cannot access the elements or you cannot update the elements if you want if you want uh, getter methods you have to define them as well if you want to have both getter and setter methods you have to define them as well this is about class uh, constructor arguments as well as class variables